Hello Explore! I hope you are well and have had a really good week and are ready for this next session of Explore. Now, in our Explore sessions, we've been looking at, about, at the book of Daniel, haven't we, in the Bible? And we've been learning lots about Daniel and lots about God. Can you remember the story from last week? We were looking at a new king, weren't we? King Nebuchadnezzar had died and we had a new king. Well, last week was all about the writing on the wall, about the warning that God gave to the king. But he didn't listen to the warning, so he was destroyed, wasn't he? And we were looking at how we get a warning, don't we, from God in the Bible. We see people who do obey God and people who don't obey God. And how we should obey God, shouldn't we? Because there are consequences to not for to not turning to God, obeying Him and loving Him. So we looked at that last week, didn't we? Now, before I before we listen to this week's story, I want us to think about all the different things we know about God. How many things can we name? There'll be lots and lots of things, but let's see if you've got some of the same ones that I have. Maybe if you want. Pause this video and write down as many things you can think of about God. Well, the ones that I've got, there are many more, but the ones that I've got is that he created the world. He is creator. He made the world and he made us. So he's creator and he loves us because he sent Jesus, didn't he? Even though we turned away from him, he loves us. He sent Jesus. He forgives us. When we do wrong against him and we say sorry. So that's some things we know about God. Uh, and some more things that we've been learning about God in the last few chapters. That God is in control. We've learned that all the way through Daniel so far, haven't we? That God is powerful. We've been learning that, haven't we? That God is a rescuing God. We've seen God rescue his people in Daniel, haven't we? Uh, that God rules over his people uh, and rules over who is saved and that we can trust him. So we've been learning lots of things about God. Now, in our story today, it's a very familiar one. But let's see what else or some of the same things that crop up that we learn about God uh, in this passage. OK, so let's listen to the story now. King Darius thought it would be a good idea to choose 120 governors to rule through all of his kingdom. He chose three men as supervisors over those 120 governors. Daniel was one of these three supervisors and he showed that he could do the work better than any of the others. Because of this, the king planned to put Daniel in charge of the whole kingdom. So the other supervisors and governors tried to find reasons to accuse Daniel. But they could not find anything wrong with him. Daniel was trustworthy. The men said, we will never find any reason to accuse Daniel. We must find something to complain about. It will have to be about the law of his God. So the supervisors and the governors went to the king. They said, King Darius live forever. We think the king should make a law that everyone would have to obey. For the next 30 days, no one should pray to any god or man except to you, our king. Anyone who doesn't obey will be thrown into the lion's den. Now our king, make the law. Write it down so it cannot be changed. So King Darius made the law and had it written. When Daniel heard that the new law had been written, he went to his house. He went upstairs to his room. The windows of the room were open towards Jerusalem. Three times each day, Daniel got down on his knees and prayed. He prayed and thanked God, just as he always had done. Then those men went to the group and found Daniel. They saw him praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king. They said, didn't you write a law that says no one may pray to any God or man except you are king? Doesn't it say that anyone who obey, disobeys during the next 30 days will be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, yes, I wrote that law. 
Then those men spoke to the king. They said, Daniel is not paying attention to the law you wrote. He still prays to his God three times a day. The king became very upset when he heard this. He decided he had to save Daniel. He worked until sunset trying to think of a way. But he could not think of one. So King Darius gave the order. They brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May the God you serve all the time save you. A big stone was brought and placed over the opening to the lion's den. Then King Darius went back to his palace, but he could not sleep. The next morning, King Darius got up at dawn. He hurried to the lion's den. As he came near to the den, he was worried. He called out to Daniel. He said, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God that you always worship been able to save you from the lions? Daniel answered, My king, live forever. My God sent his angel to close the lions' mouths. They have not hurt me, because my God knows I am innocent. I never did anything wrong to you, my king. King Darius was very happy. He told his servants to lift Daniel out of the lion's den. So they lifted him out and did not find any injury on him. This was because Daniel had trusted in his God. Then the king gave a command. The men who had accused Daniel were brought to the lion's den and thrown in it, and the lions pounced on them. Then King Darius wrote a letter. It was to all the people of all the nations, to those who spoke every language in the world. I am making a new law. This law is for people in every part of my kingdom. All of you must fear and respect the God of Daniel. Daniel's God is the living God. He lives forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed. His rule will never end. God rescues and saves his people. He does mighty miracles in heaven and on earth. God saved Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel was successful in the time of Darius, the king. This was also the time of Cyrus, the Persian, who was king. Well, did you get any or some of the same things that we heard uh, about God in that story of God rescuing Daniel? So we heard that God is our rescuing God and that he loves Daniel as well. So we're going to see three important things today. And the first one is that God rescues his people. So in our story, okay, um, the king was tricked by those evil men, wasn't he, to create this law that would trap Daniel. But Daniel didn't obey that law, did he? And because he went against the king's law, he was thrown into a huge pit of hungry lions. These lions would have been starved and really hungry. Yet God sent his angel to protect Daniel. To literally shut their mouths so they wouldn't eat Daniel. Now God has rescued before in Daniel. Can you think of a story that's similar to the one today? And it doesn't have Daniel in it, but it has Daniel's three friends. Can you remember when Daniel's three friends were rescued? They were in the fiery furnace. And they were thrown in the fiery furnace because they didn't obey a law. One of the king's laws. But God rescued them as well, didn't he? So God rescues his people. Now, I'm not saying that if something happens to us today, like uh, we get thrown into a den of hungry lions or a fiery furnace or something else bad or dangerous uh, might happen to us. I'm not saying that God's immediately going to rescue us from that. He might, but I'm not saying he will all the time because... God has already rescued us from something even worse than lions or a fiery pit. What has God rescued us from? Sin. God's rescued us from sin. That's the biggest rescue he's ever done. So we are already we have already been rescued from God um, by God from our own sin that would lead to a life forever without God. Um so God rescues his people, has rescued us from sin. Now the second thing is about why 
about why Daniel was thrown to the lions. What did Daniel do? Who can remember what did Daniel continue to do? He continued to pray, didn't he? To pray to God because he knew that was the right thing to do. He knew you couldn't pray to a human because praying uh, is only to God. Praying is talking to God, isn't it? But the law was only for 30 days. So surely to save his life, to make sure he didn't get thrown to the lions, he could have just said, well, it's only for 30 days. I could just not pray for 30 days and then carry on praying after that. That'll be fine. I'm sure God will be happy with that. Do you think God would be happy with that? No. No, he wouldn't be happy with that, would he? Because that would mean that we were putting humans before God. And that's not good because God should always be number one. God should always be first. And Daniel shows us this. Daniel shows that he wasn't afraid to continue to pray. He prayed three times a day, didn't he? He always prayed to God and he and that didn't change even when his life was threatened by it. Daniel is showing us how important it is to talk to God and God loves it when we talk to him and it's really good uh, for our walk uh, uh, as we grow as God's friends. It's really important that we talk to him. Okay, because it shows that we're looking to God and not to humans. We can talk to him when we're happy, when we're sad, when we're worried. Daniel was worried, wasn't he? We can talk to him in this situation, can't we? When we don't know what's going to happen, we can talk to him and ask him to help us. So that's the second thing. So God rescues his people and praying is really important. Now, the third thing is that God is in control. And we've been learning about this all the way through, Daniel, haven't we? That God is there. He is in control of every situation, even when it doesn't look like it. So Daniel was thrown to the lions. You could have thought that God wasn't in control then because he let Daniel be thrown to the lions. But having Daniel thrown to the lions and then rescuing him meant that the king, King Darius, praised God at the end, didn't he? He praised God and God told everybody else that they should be praising God as well. So that's showing how God's plan, even though it looked like it was going downhill, it was actually for good. That it was so that more people heard about God and were told to praise him. It's a bit like a storm. I was in a storm once when I was farming and I was doing something with some sheep. And it was a really nice day at first, but then the clouds, these huge black clouds came and covered the field and it started pelting it down with rain. And I got soaked in the first minute. And I was all huddled up with the sheep and it was chucking it down. But as soon as it had started, it stopped. This huge, massive thunderstorm stopped. The clouds parted and it was beautiful. And there was this beautiful double rainbow that went all the way from one side to the other. I think I've only seen that twice. Then I remember, usually I just see them going halfway up. But I saw this one and it went all the way across and it was beautiful. And it just made me think about how... Even when times are hard, good things can come out of it. And we know that God makes good things come out of bad events, doesn't he? He makes good things come out of bad things. So hope comes out of the storm. And we see that hope comes out of the storm of Daniel being in the lion's den. Hope comes, doesn't it? So God rescues his people. Praying to God is really important. We should talk to God. And we can talk to God, can't we, because he's rescued us. Uh, um, and the third thing, God is in control. So what are you going to remember about God from these last few, uh, from these past chapters in Daniel? What are you going to remember? What thing has really stuck with you? What thing's going to really um, help you in this time? What do you want to remember this week to help you through this week about God? Maybe that he created everything that is all powerful, that he rescues us, 
that he rules over people and rules over people who are saved, that we can trust him. For me, it's that God is in control and he carries us through all situations. That's really important for me and for all of us to know at this time, even when it seems really hard and we just don't know what the future is going to be like. It's been hard, hasn't it, lockdown? We've all found it hard. I'm sure you guys have found it hard as well. But the fact that we know that God is in control is amazing because even though we don't know the future, God does. And it is good because we know he has a good plan for everything and for all of us. So that's going to help me this week to remember that God is in control. If you want to, write down the thing um, that you're going to remember about God this week to help you through this week. Uh, But tonight, remember um, that God has rescued us so we can pray to him uh, and know that he is in control. So let me pray to God and thank him for that now. Let's do our prayer drill. One, two, three. Dear God, thank you so much uh, that you have rescued us uh, from sin, from all the wrong things that we do. I thank you that this means that we can talk to you, we can pray to you, we can tell you everything that's going on in our lives. And I thank you uh, for all that you have done for us and that you are in control. Help us to remember this at this time that we should trust in you and you alone because you are in control. I pray uh, that you give us all a really good week and help us to remember all the things we've learnt about you. Amen. Four. Okay, so on the email, you'll have some activity pages, a colouring sheet, and I've got um, uh, two crafts on there for you this week. Uh, So one of them, uh is they're both lion related so one of them is like a little um lion mask that looks quite fun so there's a template on there or you can make your own with a paper plate and some strips of orange and yellow paper make your own lion mask and the other one is another toilet roll craft i love my toilet roll crafts because i'm sure you've got lots of them lying around i have and it's a toilet roll lion now on the pdf there's lots of different ways that you can make a toilet roll lion so i made this one but there's also ones uh, where you make you use wool or you cut out a, a face and some and some legs and a tail. Or you can do them lying down. There's one that's lying down. There's lots of different examples. Uh, of, and you can do your own if you want. Uh, you could do a whole pride, a whole group of lions if you wanted some. Uh, so I've got a male lion here. You could do some female lions, some cubs. Um, but uh, I hope you have fun doing that. Uh, and... Uh, and their other pages and activity pages as well. Well, I hope you all have a really good week and I'll see you next week. Bye!